Hello and welcome into the Harwich Mariners Player Podcast. It is episode number five. I'm your host, David Sugarman, one of the voices of the Harwich Mariners. So we're rolling right along. It's episode five. The Mariners are rolling right along right now, recording this opening on Wednesday evening after they just picked up their second win, back-to-back wins for the third time this season, hoping to get their first three-game win streak when they head to Orleans tomorrow. So for this week's episode, I sat down with one of the Mariners catchers, Joey Bart. It's a position the Mariners are really stacked at. Brad Debo and, and Nick D'Alessandro, a bunch of really talented guys, and Joey Bart. Uh, we talked about that, you know, how while it's competitive and everybody wants to be the best, these guys also take notes from each other and take parts of each other's game, it would seem, and, and have learned a lot from each other in the process of being down there together and being, you know, and learning from each other every day, even if, you know, only one of them can be behind the plate on any you know, given night. Uh, so the rotation uh, has been there, but also you know learning from each other. And so we talked about that. Joe was actually with the team for the first few games and then left the Cape to go play with Team USA for a bit before coming back. We talked about that experience as well as his brother's pursuit of a football career and all that entails. So it was a really great talk. Uh, Joey's a great guy, and I think you'll uh, you'll learn to love him. So without further ado, it's episode number five of the Mariners Player Podcast with my guest, Joey Bart. Joey, thanks for joining us, man. I appreciate it. So I know you were here for the first, was it about five or six games to start the season. You leave to go to Team USA. Talk to us a little bit about that experience. Uh, it was good. Um, it was a different experience, something I'd never done before, but uh, I met a lot of good players and, you know, uh, got to got to meet some new friends and stuff like that, along with some new coaches. And uh, it was overall, it was fun, and, um, you know, but I'm glad to be back on the Cape for sure. I know the level of competition at the Cape is already really high. Can you talk about the level of play, whether it be of competition and also your teammates out there on, in the USA? Um, we have a lot of good players, I would say. Uh, but, I mean, there's a lot of good players here. I felt like there's a lot of kids that could have easily been on USA that I've seen out here. And, you know, but uh, overall, the, the teams we played when I was there, they weren't very good. But um, they are just – they had some good players, but they just weren't deep top to bottom. You know, they might have had a good starter – but uh, whoever they were bringing in after was was uh, pretty average. But, you know, it was a good time. I mean, I was there for a week, and, uh, you know, things things went the way they went. But uh, I need to be back up here, and, you know, that's that's where I'm glad to be here. So. And you talk about uh, the depth or maybe lack thereof at times on USA. It seems like, at least on this team, super, super deep at catcher. Can you talk about, uh, obviously, it's – competition for playing time but also you talk about maybe how much you guys are learning from each other and teaching from each other especially as a guy with you who was on the cape last year and was an all-star and has been through it a little bit yeah um i'm really trying to help uh obviously learn things from brad and dylan stuff and, uh, coaches got me working with brad a lot and dude brad's brad's coming along a lot and uh he's a really good catcher and really good hitter and stuff like that but you know just taking little things from it, everyone uh, learning how people do things at their schools and stuff like that and just collecting those thoughts really can help you. So, I know you were on the Cape last summer with Wareham. Uh, can you talk about maybe the difference in culture between Wareham and Harwich and, and why the switch came about to begin with, why maybe don't go back to Wareham? You know what, man? Uh, it had nothing to do with Wareham. I had the greatest summer of my life in Wareham last summer. I had a blast. I met some friends that I talked to every day. I just It was just something, you know, I wanted to uh, – I wanted to experience like this side of the Cape, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wareham was great. And another big reason was to uh, my coach last year, Jerry Weinstein with Wareham, he had told me that he wasn't coming back. So, you know, it was kind of one of those things where I was like, well, you know, why not try to go play in Harwich and uh, on a very respectable team. But, uh, you know, last summer was, it was so much fun and this summer's going well too. I'm trying to get over these little injury bugs and stuff, but things are starting to starting to come along and I'm feeling better, so that's all that matters, just you know, trying to get out here and have fun and play hard and get better. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit about your brother, who's also a pretty accomplished athlete. Is it Mike or Mikey? Mikey. He goes by Mikey, okay. Yeah. So your brother Mikey was defensive end at North Carolina, went undrafted, signed by the Arizona Cardinals. Right. Uh, is he still in, in training he, camp so right he, now? So he got released by the Cardinals, okay. but he's talking back. Latest I've heard, he's talking with the Cardinals again. Um, you know what, man? My brother, he, I'm, I have so much respect for him. He's a, he's a six-two, six-three white kid in, in college football playing defensive <laughs> line. He led his, he led his team in sacks every year. He's just a grinder. One of the strongest kids on his team. Um, 
it's taught me a lot, you know, like how to how to prepare my body and do things like that. But uh, you know what, man, he's enjoying his life right now. He's hanging out back in Atlanta and working out and uh, you know doing. He's never had time off in his life. In mm -hmm. high school, we, we came up through a real, real serious high school program um, in the South, and and you know he's he's having a ball right now. But uh, he knows to where wherever he goes, you know it's it's meant to be. So. You're not. I mean, you were you were talking about him, six two, six three. Mm -hmm. You're not a small guy yourself. Yeah, was yeah, there? Yeah. Was there? I mean, what are you, no, six three or six four? Yeah, I'm about six six three. Yeah. Oh, was were you a football player at all in the day, or was it always baseball? Yeah. So I was. And that's probably the hardest decision I ever made was trying to pick which one I wanted to do. Um, I was pretty pretty good football player, and um, you know, I just came. I started getting some offers um, early in my high school career, you know, and I just kind of thought about, you know, I mean, you never know, like, a my high school team was very serious, and mm -hmm. it wouldn't have allowed me to play much summer baseball. And B, you know, one hit to the shoulder, and then you know it could have been it for baseball too. So it was one of those things I didn't want to be greedy, and you know baseball is what I've always loved to do, and it's the right decision I made. And I fall more and more in love with it every single day I come out here, especially playing on the Cape and stuff. So, but yeah, it was definitely a tough decision. Uh, it wasn't easy on my coaches or you know I, my friends, you know, but it's what I want to do, and everyone's on my side now. So. You're playing at Georgia Tech now. Were there any offers on the football side from, uh, I know you said you had a couple of offers roll in early on when you were still playing. Where yeah. were those offers coming from? No, no, no. I was, so I got offered for baseball early. So, oh, okay. So it was one of those things where it was like, you know what, here's some, here's this on the table. But no, man, I mean, my, uh, I would never brag on myself, but we had 18 <laughs> players in my high school senior class signed Division One, And before I quit, I was up there with the best of them. So you never know. I, I surely think I could have played. I mean, people tell me, coaches tell me, they can't believe I quit. But uh, I definitely could have played at the next level. It was just one of those things where, you know, I felt like baseball is what I love to do. And, and it was definitely the right decision. So, Of course, you're on the Cape looking to go again to the even next level, you know, one day being the MLB. I know your brother hasn't played in an, in, uh, an NFL game yet, but have you guys talked about, a little bit about uh, what that lifestyle was, at least in the beginning for him? I mean, he certainly got a little taste of it. Yeah, man, he was out there with, uh, with shoot, Tyron Matthew, Patrick Peterson, Jarvis Jones. Those are some of his some of his boys out there in, in uh, Arizona. And he was saying basically what he what I took away from that is the NF, the difference between he said college and the professional level is no one's bad. He said in college you face a lot of great players that are in the NFL, but you don't you don't get away with maybe facing a, a crappy pitcher one day or you know a, a kind of an undersized offensive lineman and so and so. So he said it's just real competitive all the way down and everyone can play. And, uh, you know, I've kind of learned that, too. I mean, shoot, we both played in the ACC, and I face pro-caliber players every single day in the ACC and especially in the Cape. So it's just one of those things where it's, he said it wasn't that big of an adjustment, but it's just one of those things that you can't slack off or take any plays off because it goes noticed. So. Yellow Jackets, Tar Heels, football, who you, who you got? Who you rooting for? So when my brother played us, I was pretty neutral. Um, I wanted my brother to do well, but I didn't care if uh, – I, I would like it if the Jackets won. Now I'll, I'll definitely pull for pull for uh, Georgia Tech, but, um, you know, I, I'm a big Carolina guy too, so. Okay. And – I, I hope there's been no tension. I'm from Indiana, and so we took a step down, went to the NIT, and then you guys beat us there too. So were you, were you at that game? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't at that one. No, uh, I don't know where was that game. It was in Georgia Tech. Was it it was in Georgia Tech because Indiana. It was, I think it was over spring break and didn't want to host an yeah, NIT yeah, yeah. game with yeah, those we, students. No, nah, we. I remember that. We we made it to the championship, right, and lost. Or something, something like that. Certainly, we, fall, yeah, we were in the, the NIT championship and. You know, some guys really like that. I wasn't too into basketball. I went to a few games, but you know, it, I mean, I support those guys for sure, though. I always get these guys, uh, everybody out on these two questions. Uh, one, what is the biggest thing you're looking to work on this summer skill-wise and want to go back to uh, tech uh, having polished up a little bit? I just want to, um, you know, I'm going to come up here and I'm, I'm going to work a lot on my swing. You know, I last summer I made a lot of adjustments up here and they were good, you know, but they... Uh, definitely have to make more and more you know coming through the college season I, I had a decent year I thought but uh there's a lot of I struggled a lot and there's a lot of room for improvement so you know I'm coming up here I'm trying to stay down on my legs when I hit more and and drive the ball back back around the field you know instead of pulling it as much but basically just trying to get in the air and you know use my strength and you know I can carry them out of here I can hit doubles and drive in runs and stuff like that from the offensive side and then defensively just work, really work on uh, some flexibility and, 
you know, uh, a lot of it's been, man, just staying healthy and keeping your body in shape because if you can't, like I've been, I've never been hurt in my life, but I got hurt at the end of the season and then I just, I ripped my toenail off my toe. It's been kind of bothering me here lately, but. Playing baseball. Playing yeah. baseball, yeah. So it's just one of those things It's like, really keep yourself, I've been, I've been blessed my whole life to never been injured before. And once you do, you really take into perspective how you prepare and the things you do. But, you know, just working on a little catching things like my hands and stuff like that, uh, throwing runners out and uh, definitely uh, working with my pitchers and getting to know them because that's most important. Before I get to my last question, I, it, like you said, like every, all these pitches are new. Some guys get lucky around the Cape if they get a pitcher who's from their team or maybe they've seen them around the conference. Is it difficult with you know a brand new bag of pitchers that uh, for the most part maybe at best you've, you, you've played against them once or yeah. twice? Uh, you know what, man, it's not easy. It certainly takes some getting used to knowing uh, these guys' tendencies and so forth. But um, if you can catch, you can catch. So I, yesterday, like with Bomb, it took me like an inning or two to kind of get locked in because this fastball, it'll cut some or it'll tail some, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's just one of those things where, you know, it comes with comfort and uh, these guys can really pitch, so you really have to be focused up. So, Last question for you. You strike me as a pretty thoughtful guy. We get, we've gotten to know you pretty well uh, on the field and what your skill set's like. What do you think, what would you like people to know the most about Joey Bart, the person off the field? Oh, off the field, man, I'm, a, I'm an extremely social guy, and uh, I like to have a good time. Um, people people probably don't know, I'm, I, pro, uh, I fish a lot of bass tournaments, and I like to hunt a lot, so there's not a lot of time me hanging out with my buds and messing around, but, uh, you know, I'm just kind of an outgoing guy, and, you know, I'm kind of, whatever's going on, I kind of go with the flow, kind of a laid-back kind of guy, you know, just, just down for basically whatever, so. Awesome, Joey. Thanks, man. Appreciate right. it. Appreciate it, dude.